Coming up on this edition of Command Center, Coach Commands with Ron Rivera. It is finally time. Week one has arrived, and it's time to kick off the 90th anniversary season for the franchise and the first as the Washington Commanders. Alice, Coach, what preparations are underway as the Jags get set to come to town? Somebody you have to be prepared for is quarterback Trevor Lawrence. Entering his sophomore season, what can we expect from the former first overall pick? Coach will review some game tape for us. And you asked, Coach is answering. Questions submitted by you, the fans, are being asked to the head coach of the Washington Commanders. It all starts right now. Command Center, Coach Commands with Ron Rivera is brought to you by your local Honda dealer. Find adventure in a new Honda. New vehicles are arriving daily. See your local Honda dealer. Hello and welcome on into Command Center, Coach Commands with Ron Rivera, Julie Donaldson with the head coach right here. And Logan Paulson is standing by to break down some film with Coach in just a few seconds. So make sure you get ready for that. But Coach, let's talk about it. The week is finally here. The regular season, we're finally preparing and planning for somebody. Does this week feel different than every other week that you've been going through so far since training camp started? It does because, uh, you know, the expectations, the anxiety, the excitement's all heightened. It really is. And so as we start preparing, you know, you get more and more geeked up, I guess, is that like they like to say. But at the same time, you, you're, you know, you're trying to focus in on what the task at hand is, that is being prepared to play your best football and win a football game. In the preseason, we didn't get to exactly see everything that you want to do with this offense. And, and folks are really excited. They want to see Carson Wentz uh, being able to use his arm, stretch the field, to see all the extra additions you put in, and Jahan Dotson, Curtis Samuel Healthy, um, J.D. McKissick. I mean, there's so many options on offense. Um, folks want to know what we're going to see. What are you expecting from Carson? Well, I'm pretty excited myself to see exactly what we have, too, because, you know, we didn't have have all of our offensive linemen up ready to play. We were very thin at tight end. And again, as you said, you know, we were working Curtis Samuel back in. Jahan was getting his feet wet for the first time. But there's a lot of playmakers. There's a lot of reason to be excited because, again, if we can protect Carson, if we can get those playmakers going, I think we can be pretty dynamic on the offensive side. If we talk about the quarterback on the other side, Trevor Lawrence, uh, number one overall pick, had a little bit of a rough rookie season, as Jacksonville did all across the board, hence the change in their head coaching staff with Doug Peterson coming in. But, you know, he's got a huge arm, too. He And for a guy who is 6'6", six, his ability to get out and run on you as well. What have you seen from him that you can take, knowing what Doug Peterson may want to try and do with him as well. Well, you, you look at you know Doug's pass and you see some of the things that he did using the RPO system. You know, the run pass option is, is big for him because Trevor did that when he was at Clemson. So you know he's very capable. It was a big part of what Doug did when he was at Philadelphia with Carson, for that matter. So we're anticipating some of that stuff. We're also anticipating him trying to get out on the edges. So one of the things that we have worked on was one of our one of our Achilles heels during, during the preseason, and that's pass rush lane discipline. We have to contain this quarterback, keep him in the pocket, and get after him that way. Otherwise, man, for someone 6'6", six, six, you wouldn't think he can run as quickly as he does, but he can get out there and put some yards up on you. You mentioned, okay, Doug Peterson with what he did with Philadelphia. You also could look at their defensive coordinator and say, okay, what did they do um, with the Tampa Bay Bucks? How will you go into this game? Because even Peterson said, okay, you're going to be familiar with his schemes, but it's a lot of different players that you might not be familiar in those situations. So. What do you do going in to know what to expect from this team? Well, you know, looking at what Mike Caldwell did or has been involved with his entire career, you know, I actually coached Mike when I was in Philadelphia. He was one of my linebackers under Jim Johnson. So I know, you know, he's very familiar with, with, with a, an aggressive attack style. Then you put him with Todd Bowles for as long as he's been with Todd. And again, that's an aggressive style. So we're anticipating some, some very uh, intricate, aggressive football from them. You know, a lot of different blitzes, a lot of different man coverages, trying to force things to happen. So again, we've got to be on our, on our game because we don't know what to expect. We may, we may be familiar with that, but we don't know what to expect because of the personnel. And that's probably the biggest thing that, that you have to deal with. Is there one area that you have a big question mark going into this game that you're going to really focus in on and say, okay, let's see how this unit performs? Well, for us, you know, offensively, I, I, I'm, I'm really excited to see the playmakers. I really am. I'm see what we have with all those tight ends. See the maturity level that we have at the wide receiver position because we got a lot of young guys. I mean, if you think about it, Terry McLaurin's our oldest guy going into his fifth season. So you start to wonder just exactly where those young players are. Defensively, it's, it will be about the pass rush. It'll be just how mature we are, how disciplined we are, um, and, and you know, just how much of a, a, a missing piece is Chase. And that's the thing that we're concerned with. Excited to see it all come together. Yes. 
Coach is going to head over to talk with Logan at the touchscreen, and they're going to be talking about linebacker Jamin Davis. Washington used its first-round pick, 19th overall, in the 2021 draft. He worked through some growing pains during his rookie season, but they say outside of quarterback, linebacker is the toughest position to make the jump from college to the pros. So here's a look at the numbers he put up in 2021. He played 16 games, had 70 tackles, 48 of them came solo. He had one sack, but we can expect those numbers to go up this season as he's expected to be a big contributor. For more, let's go into the film room. It is presented by Maven Spire. Ransomware goes three and out with Maven Spire's smart as a service cybersecurity offerings. Learn more at mavenspire.com. Logan Coach, take it away. Thanks so much, Julie, here with Coach. We're going to take a look at a couple plays that I think highlight some Jamin Davis growth here, right? So obviously we're getting Jamin Davis. Where is he at? Right, young man right here. And we got a motion pre-snap from, uh, from Kansas City, and they brought Jamin in with it. And to me, that's a pretty big man zone indicator, right? Yes. Especially with these guys over here stacked on top of each other. And Patrick Mahomes, the guy you've talked about before, sees that and he says, oh, wait, what's going on? Oh, I'm going to check the play. And he says, oh, a little tap of the helmet. And we get into we get into a new man beater here, right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to get a basically a pick play here, and then we're going to run around here on the outside. Why, coach, is this hard, and why is this cool that Jamin is able to match this? Well, the first thing you know that they that they they do understand is that we're in a man concept. But the thing that I like what Jason uh, Jamin's doing is he's being active in terms of his movement. He's not staying static. He's not making it easy on anybody as far as where is Jamin. He shows the B gap potential blitz. OK, then he backs out, puts himself in position where we say a no pick position. OK, in other words, he's aware that this guy is in a pick position. Jamin has to now move himself into that spot where he can't be picked by the receiver. So as the play unfolds, you see how Jamin steps up. OK, yeah. now he's going to loosen himself and he is going to get himself over the top. Right. And again, like to me, when I see this, I'm like this, this play, they call you know, like they talk about putting your offense in the best position to be mm -hmm. successful. They checked this because they thought they could get him. Correct. But again, you guys run a lot of pick stuffs in practice too, yes. the commanders. He's gotten a lot better at this. Yes, he has. And you know, he's got the athletic ability to run. And that's one of the things that really attracted to him as one of, as our potential draft pick. So what happened was on this particular play, okay, the, the quarterback, he reads the fact that Jamin is over the top and he knows if he tries to put that ball in there, Jamin's there to make a play on the ball. Right. So what he tries to do, he tries to dump it to the tight end who was trying to set the pick. Right. And then again, I just it's, it's a little thing like the ball's not targeted, but he's the reason that this play is successful. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. And again, he's done well in coverage. He was always a great coverage player, but I think the area that he's improved the most is in the run. Here we go. Jamin Davis right here in the middle of the defense. He's going to sneak up in here and get a nice TFL. And we're going to talk about why this is good from the end zone here real quick. Okay. But here we go. But again, he reads the play, sees the crease and gets through it. He yeah. doesn't hesitate. He's very decisive. And one of the things that we, we've been working on him is that is getting downhill, getting downhill. Right. And he seems to be getting it even more and more. Well, I think that's the thing is last year when you watched him, he was very indecisive. Mm -hmm. And now you see a guy who's, I don't even know if he's doing the right thing all the time, but he's fast to the football. And I think that's a, a confident football player. It's a good football player. Absolutely. And what you're seeing, though, is you're seeing a guy that understands the concepts a little bit better right. than he had in the past. So as he's reading this play, okay, and he's seeing all the action that goes on, the one thing he does, and he does it very well, is he plays off of the tackle in front of him. Yeah. The tackle gets what we call two-hatted, okay? Two, oh, words, yeah, let's talk about two-hat. He two gets scooped, basically. Okay, yeah. okay? Is that a good or a bad thing? That's coach? a bad thing. Because yeah. Once you get scooped, once you have two hats on you, <clears throat> you've got to maintain your crease. We lose he, our because he really should be over here. Right? Yes, he yep. should. He should. But what happens is Jamin sees sees the play, recognize it. Instead of staying and trying to work to where he's supposed to, right? Okay. Now that he sees that Mathis has been scooped, yep. he now replaces him and gets himself into a crease to make a play. Yeah, I love that right here. And then right in the and again, like this is this is a tough play. This is a tough fit for everybody. And he's just so decisive here yes. to make that tackle. I mean, that has to make you feel good about him going into the 2022 season. As far as his growth, absolutely. You know that now because he's learning, he's growing, he's playing faster because he's confident. Yeah, absolutely. Coach, thanks so much. Right. Always fun to talk about young players getting better. For everything you need to know about the team, do not miss our flagship show, Command Center. You can join myself, former tight end and film room expert Logan Paulson, and our wideout 8 to the 9 Santana Moss every day for your commander's fix, highlights analysis, and inside access you will not get anywhere else. 
You can see every episode on our YouTube channel and on Commanders.com. You can also check us out on NBC Sports Washington weekdays, 5.30 and 10 p.m. Now keep it here because when we come back, Logan and Coach Rivera are heading into Coach's office to review some of the game tape on Jacksonville's second-year quarterback, Trevor Lawrence. And coming up a little later in the show, Coach Rivera answers hard-hitting questions submitted by Commanders fans. It's the only way fans can get a direct line to Coach, and we're bringing it to you right here on Command Center Coach Commands with Ron Rivera, presented by your local Honda dealer. Here's what you need to know heading into Sunday's game. September 11th, 1 p.m. at FedEx Field. Make sure you get there early and come join our pregame show starting at 11 o'clock in the morning on the main concourse. Uh, it's going to be a little warm, 89 degrees, partly cloudy for you. If you want to watch it on television, tune to Fox. Of course, you can listen to Bram Weinstein, London Fletcher, and myself on Big 100 iHeartRadio. Time now to get Coach Rivera talking about this matchup during his meeting with the media just heightened because it's the opening game. I think that's the one thing. I mean, it's, you know, you look at it, you go into it, and you approach it as this is a game. This this is the opening game. This is the first game of the year. I mean, that's the excitement. That's, you know, we're back to, to, to football with real consequences. You know, it's, you know, I said this before. I said, you know, when you practice um, during training camp, there's no consequences. So everybody's flying around. Then you play a preseason game, and there's a few consequences, and, and some guys kind of duck. Then you get into the real games, and then you really find out who's stepping up. That, that's what's exciting because you want to see that. You want to see where you are. As I said, we, we don't know a lot about who we are right now because we haven't had everybody on the football field yet. So getting a group of the guys back I think is going to be exciting for us. I, I'm looking forward to it. I really am. Well, I, I, I'm excited, to be honest with you, just because you know, we're, we're getting a lot of our pieces back. And, and you know, we, we, we got a full complement of tight ends. We feel good about who all of our guards are. You know, so it's. Um, I'm excited. I mean, uh, I'm 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 fired up for who we can be. I, I like what we've seen so far. I thought today's practice was very spirited. They had a good tempo. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of sharp crispness already. Something that we hope to carry on as as we practice the next couple of days and getting ready for Sunday. Well, it is finally here, the games that matter, as Jacksonville comes to FedEx Field. They come with a new head coach in Doug Peterson, but they return quarterback Trevor Lawrence as he was selected number one overall in the 2021 NFL Draft. So what is it that Lawrence does well, and how do the commanders prepare to defend against it? Well, for that, we're going to the game tape. This is the Rivera Review, presented by DC Prime. Not all stakes are created equal. All right, Coach, uh, so this is this uh, RPO concept, and I know uh, Coach Peterson likes to run this a lot. He ran this in Philly, um, and I just want to talk about why this is such, a, such an issue for defenses. And everybody runs these now, but he seems to have a, a special affinity for them. Well, he does have a huge affinity for it, um, and, and I'm almost wondering if that, if that was, you know, three, four, five years ago right. when he really got Philadelphia going. Right. I think now so many more teams are doing it in the league, so many more teams – um, understand how to defend it, mm -hmm. that what's happening now is I think it's just a part of what you do. It's not the staple. Right. You know, but you still have to respect it. This is a quarterback that had been doing it all his career in college and was very mm -hmm. successful. And I think they're going to rely on what he does and does well. And something else I was wondering about, because you said it's not as common, and I agree. Do they just throw this in here so you got to prep for it? I think so, to a degree. But because it's something that, that Trevor Lawrence has done and right. did well, I think, again, you know, Coach, you know, Peterson is thinking, okay, hey, let's keep it rolling. Yeah, absolutely. So here, obviously, the, the read player yep. is this number 41 here, right? Yes. And the, thing, the reason, as an offensive player, I like this is because you get plus hats to the front side of the run because yes. really 41 is not in the count. Correct. And he's basically made impotent by the fact that he's got to defend the pass and play the run. How would you coach this player here to make this well, go? Well, the biggest thing what you want to do is you want him to do just like he's doing right now. He's reading through the process right now. Okay, he sees the mesh, he's popping his feet, and he's reading and he's looking. Okay, the thing that's to the benefit of Pittsburgh's defense is if you count it, it's an eight-man box. Right, versus a six-man front or whatever. Correct. Right. So because if you count it and it's an eight-man box, they've got enough hats to slow this play down. Yeah. 
And as the play progresses, you see what happens. Again, as you said, they're reading off of 41, the, 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 the weak side linebacker. Okay, He goes through his progression. He reads it the way he's supposed to, and then he reacts to the ball. Okay, But what happens is, because of, of the way it's played at the point of attack, yeah. okay, it is, it's difficult for them, you know, as far as Jacksonville, to have success on this. And yeah. you see this illustrated right here. Again, what's going to happen is 48 may get a little bit upfield and really should have set it down a little sooner. Yeah, because okay? you, you, want a, you want a hard edge there, right? Correct. Okay. But what I like, really, is the way 24 yeah. goes into their guard. He comes in low, good pad level, and right helps set a front right there. Yeah. 94 plays off it with his eyes back inside. And right now, as everything stands, there's really no place for this ball carrier to go. Yeah. Again, eight-man box. You know, good reads, good keys for the most part, and flowing the direction they're supposed to. If that ball cuts back, you know, their right, their right yeah. defensive tackle has a chance to make a play. 51 plays with his hands. He's got a chance to separate, get off the center, make a play. 94, as it looks, if that ball continues straight ahead, there's the tackle. And as I said, I really like the way the defensive back came in and set a low bridge in terms of just holding the point of attack. Yeah, and I think the thing that gives me anxiety is if you go back to that, there seems to be a ton of air in the defense, right? right? It's not like, you know, when you see an outside zone stretch, it's like all nice and tight. Right. It's just like a ton of space with a good player. But, and so, but you're saying that's okay because right. you've got guys who can tackle and make plays here. Correct. Cause, but, but, but again, it, what it looks like and what it ends up are two different right. things. Because mm -hmm. again, if 65 crosses his face on the guard, yep. okay, and gets to his left, all right, that cutback is shut down. Well, so, well, he cut over off of 65. If 41 tempos it, He'll be he in the cutback. Exactly. Because right? you get the back, kind of like you were talking about with the pass concepts last week. You just get them to bubble, take an extra step, increase the reaction time of the defense. Correct. And that's what you would love here. And this is what you really like about it. Because, to, again, to me, 24 coming in as a defensive back supporting against the run. Yeah. Okay. Does a nice job. Not like what 94 does, because he's got his hands on the initial blocker who's going to work to 24. Okay. Yep. But he's not going to have any real power because 94s take a little bit of it off of it. And it's interesting you bring up the eight-man front. It actually screws up the offensive line's count here because really the guard tackle com or the, the center guard combination should be going to 51. Correct. And it's push crack on 24. 41's the read guy. So actually bringing that extra guy right. kind of messes up the count. I, I think it does because for the most part this this play is really set for a seven or right. six-man box more so than it is an eight-man box. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it's super interesting, coach. On game days, do not miss Command Center Game Day Live, the official pregame show of the Washington Commanders. We're live on the air starting two hours before kickoff. That will be 11 a.m. on Sunday, September 11th for our opener against the Jags. You can watch on our YouTube channel, Facebook, and Twitter. After the game, do not miss Command Center Post Game Live for reaction analysis and interviews with head coach Ron Rivera and quarterback Carson Wentz. You can also find that on YouTube and Big 100. Take command of your game days. No, don't go anywhere because when we come back, Coach Rivera is back here in the studio with me and he'll be answering some questions sent in by you, the fans. It's your direct line to the head coach and it's coming up next on Command Center. Coach Commands with Ron Rivera presented by your local Honda dealer. Welcome back in Julie Donaldson with head coach Ron Rivera. And, and this is a segment where we let the fans kind of do all the asking of the questions. It was fun last week mm -hmm. kicking it off. So ready to go again? Yes. Okay, here is question number one. Hey coach, Andy Burrows here from the UK. Looking forward to coming over to see you boys play week one. My question to you is how important is it to you that the team start the season well and get out the blocks fast and don't play catch up in most games? Well, I think it's very important that you you, you start off playing well early. I mean, and again, because this is an opportunity to send the tone and tempo for the rest of the year. You come out, play hard, fast, physical football, win a football game, and that really changes the scope of things as far as you're not in a hole, you don't have to dig yourself out, you go out and play and play hard and play fast. Everybody's expecting hopefully the Jags and then the Lions to be an easy, fast 2-0 start for this team as well, so it would be great to get off on the right foot. Uh, okay, let's see. Question number two. Hey, Coach. Trevor Storrs here from Ref the District Podcast. A lot of players work on their craft off the field, whether it's film work, playbook, weight room, or the practice field, training, you know, all the above. 
as a coach, I wonder, are you still looking to improve your craft the same way players are? And if so, what's one thing that you're looking to make that happen for you this season? Go Commanders. That's a very interesting question because, you know, the big thing for us as far as coaches is really we just try to self-scout and look at what we are doing. Um, most of the self-improvement comes in the offseason. You take a look at some of the things that you've done, some decisions you made, and what, what decisions can be better. How can you improve on, on those situations, circumstances? You know, we have an analytics department. Um, they do a lot of the self-scout for us, get a lot of that information back and get a chance to look at the things that we've done and how can we get better. Um, for me, some of the decisions I got to make in terms of whether we go for something on fourth down, you know, um, do I challenge on a play like that? That's another thing that I try to study and, and understand even more so each week during the season. I have meetings with our analytics guy that do, the, do that uh, research for us. We can't forget it's competition too. You always have to be improving on your craft yes. um, until you get to that point of perfection, which nobody ever achieves. Uh, let's get to the next question. If you are not an NFL coach, what would you be doing? Well, I think the big thing is if I wasn't an NFL coach, I'd have been an NFL player. Oh, wait, I already did that. Um, <laughs> You'd be sitting right here doing this, talking to everybody as an analyst. You'd be no, great at it. You know, I, I think, honestly, though, I, th I think if, if, you know, if professional football hadn't been the, 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 the direction I took, it would have, I would have probably done something either in the military as a first responder or, <clears throat> excuse me, or most certainly coaching football on the high school level. It's in your blood. Okay, we have one final question here for you. Um, this one's a really hard-hitting one, though. Yeah. What's up, Coach? Trust Way. We have Chicago here coming up soon. I want to know what is your favorite deep dish spot out there. Might need to get a little pregame pizza. I don't do that much running, so hopefully I wouldn't be that sick. <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay? Like, he, I mean, you got to love trust. He wants that deep dish. Chicago will be a Thursday oh, yeah. night game. You got to get some pie. Oh, absolutely. Um, for, for, for me, for Stephanie, for the family, is Lou Malnati's. When we were out there, the Lou Malnati Brian Piccolo charity fundraiser was a big bear thing that we used to be involved with. And Stephanie and Mrs. Malnati had teamed up together for some of the events. And so we got to know the family pretty well, but we also got to really enjoy the restaurant. So for me, for, 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 for my money, it's Lou Malnati's pizza. Yeah, your money's probably no good there, the feeling. <laughs> All right, there you go. Uh, that concludes week one. Here we are, let's go against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Thank you.